In a loud wire interview with Pantera vocalist Phil Anselmo, he talks about how Dimebag Daryl was the greatest metal guitarist, explaining how he had soul in his guitar playing unlike Ingve Malmsteen. This is what he said. There's different types of guitar players. Okay, there's Ingve Malmsteens out there, great, good for him. Does he have the soul Dimebag had? Nope. I mean not even close. I don't give a flying fuck about sweeps, that's boring bullshit for guitar nerds. I prefer a motherfucker with soul, heart and goddamn muscle. And passion. Motherfucker had it all. He had taste, he had a heart, he had this thing called soul, and I'm from New Orleans. When you make a note wiggle, with beautiful vibrato, he had all that. Phil continued, then he had the damn whammy bar which at the time might have been considered hackney and somehow he brought it back to life and made it do different things. He could make his guitar talk. My point is, no matter how hungover, no matter what he did, somehow when he would get on that F King stage it would click and he would be a machine. In an interview from 2014 on the Straight.com website, Yngwie Malmsteen expressed his opinions about Gibson guitars saying that they would not last one second with him on stage. This is what he said. Yeah, Les Paul's nice being a piece of furniture, he replied. It's nice to look at. It wouldn't survive five minutes with me on stage. Due to Malmsteen being a Fender fanatic, he also said other things about Ibanez guitars saying that they are bad copies of the original Fender Stratocaster. Well, it's kind of the original instrument, said Ingve. Everything else is a copy of it, you know. All the Ibanez and stuff like that's just a copy. It's like a bad copy, really. It's the same design but it's a bad copy. I'm an original, very purist kinda guy, he added, that's why I use Marshalls, Ferraris whatever. I like the original stuff. Neoclassical guitar master Ingwie Malmsteen goes through his top 5 tips for guitarists. 1. Learn from the best. Just like you, I had heroes as a kid. I got the first Deep Purple album and started figuring out how to do the whole Richie Blackmore thing. To be honest, I got pretty damn close. And then I soon realized he already exists, so I really should do something that sounds like me. It's a really good thing to emulate someone, in order to learn your trade, I actually think it's very important. But eventually, you might want to go somewhere else with it, and that's up to each and every individual. 2. Knowledge is power. You're going to laugh at this, I only play with my ears. I don't think about technique or scales or anything. I just think about what I sound like. I grew up in a very musical family and I knew how important it was to know all the theory. You might think it's boring, but you have to learn the relationships between all the scales, keys and notes, in order to know what you can and can't do. Say Phrygian and diminished, they're all connected. A harmonic minor is also E Phrygian dominant, but you could play diminished from F sharp every three frets, and you'll bring that flavor. It all becomes hardwired, and you soon stop thinking about it. 3. Open every door. When you play blues, you go into a certain mode, you know. The groundwork isn't actually that hard, it's all mathematical theory. You have the key to this door, and when you open it, there's a hallway with 100 other doors. Behind those doors, are more doors, and it keeps going on. But you need the key, to open that first door. Once you have that, you don't need to worry anymore. That's how you become an amazing improviser, and I feel that improvisation is one of the most important things to be a musician. All the great composers were great improvisers, they wrote it all down, because they had to. That all comes down to knowing the theory. It's how you stay in the right place and never head anywhere you're not supposed to be. 4. Express yourself clearly. When I first came on the scene, way back when, people always used to say two things. Hey man, I can't believe you have no distortion on your guitar. And I have more gain on my shit than you could imagine, insane levels of it. I just make sure each note is clearly expressed, you do one, and then you move on to the next. Don't let them bleed into each other. The other thing people use to say is, you pick every note. I don't pick every note, if I did that, with the amount of gain I use, it would sound crazy. But it's not all legato either, there's no real system to it. I could pick every note, if I wanted to, and sometimes do, if it's the sound I'm looking for, my solo sound like many compositions. Some guitar players do repetitive things really fast, and I always felt that there should be a melody behind it, even if it's fast. People also used to say, wow, I can't believe how you wrote that solo. 
And I didn't write that solo, it was never written. Roll the tape. And off I go, it's completely improvised, even on the records. If there's a catchy phrase, sure I will use it, but more often than not, I play something a bit different. 5. Listen to the other instruments. I think since the late 50s, guitar players spend all their time in the bedroom listening to other guitar players. It went from Mighty Waters to Chuck Berry to Hank Marvin to Jimi Hendrix to Pete Townshend to Eddie Van Halen and so on, they were all fucking amazing. I love them, but they all had that in common with the exception of one, Alan Holdsworth, who took his lines from saxophones. I became infatuated with the classical violin that ended up being my inspiration. It's a strange thing to say, because I've been on the road with Steve Vai and all those guys a few times. We've spent a lot of time together, and I've really gotten to know how they think, and they all have that in common, they love other guitar players. I'm not saying that's bad, I'm just saying it's something I see more often than not. You may run the risk of having slightly less identity, but I wouldn't want to knock anyone for that. I understand how it feels, when I was a kid, I wanted to be like Blackmore, because he was cool, but it's important for me to feel like I'm doing my own thing. Ingwie Malmsteen discussed his guitar pickup preference with Amit Sharma, saying, single coils have this magnetic window that's more direct and precise. It reminds me of a Paganini Vivaldi violin sort of sound, it starts pure and ends pure. It gives your hands much more of a factor in the sound, how you pitch the notes, bend them and so on. If you suck, you're gonna suck real bad, and if you play well, it's going to sound really good. Using double coil pickups kills a lot of the guitar tone, you lose the acoustic mechanics. With my single coils driven through the Marshalls and Overdrive, it sounds massive. Focusing on gear in general, Ingui noted, I've used Fender Strats with Marshalls since forever. Since I last played London, I've switched to my YJM Seymour Duncan pickups, and I also have a Fender YJM Overdrive paddle, which is fairly new. It's all based on what I've loved before, nothing is new. When it comes to guitar gear, I am pretty set in my ways. I've been playing for eons now, but way back I remember Eddie Van Halen came out, and I loved his playing, he was amazing. But then everyone started copying his guitars with Floyd's, and I didn't. In an archived 1985 interview that's been made public online. Guitar virtuoso Ingui Malmsteen shared his detest towards metal music, calling it all sorts of nasty names. The chat is indeed an old one, but it offers an interesting insight on 22-year-old edgy Ingui. Ingui Malmsteen told interviewer Steve Newton, as far as I'm concerned heavy metal is a very primitive, and in my opinion not very necessary form of music, that could be extinct, as far as I'm concerned. I really detest it. It's disgusting, and it's really boring, and it's very low, and it's totally free from any intelligence or logic or emotions. It's all crap, and it's for little frustrated pre-puberty kids. And I'm really fed up with it. Why do you think Ingui Malmsteen had such a strong hate for metal music back then, tell us your thoughts in the comments below. In other more up-to-date news Richie Blackmore recently shared his thoughts on Ingui Malmsteen, saying great things. I know him, and he's a very nice guy. Excellent guitar player. A lot of people have kind of questioned his angle, but he obviously knows his stuff. He might be a bit too tall, but that's my only criticism. I did meet his mother in Sweden, a very nice woman who reminded me of my mother back in England. So Ingui and I get on fine. He's like a family member. I definitely think he's probably the best at what he does and, for what it's worth, the fastest. And he doesn't play the typical blues, minor kind of interpretations. He knows his scales. It's more interesting. Discussing the importance of rhythm guitar, Slayer guitarist Kerry King shared his thoughts on shredders, saying that their music tends to easily bore him as repetitive. He tells Total Guitar, I think a lot of the shredder type players, and I don't mean everybody, they're not very good songwriters. Players like Fire Malmsteen spend their time perfecting what they do only as far as leads, Ingui had a run where he did some good songs, but when it became just about how many notes he can fit in a millisecond, King added, don't get me wrong, he's an amazing player, but after three songs, I'm done. He'll just keep doing it faster on a different string. Rhythm guitar is where a song is constructed. If there's a song you like, it's because of that rhythm guitar. 
the lead stuff at the end of the bay is just the icing. During the rest of the chat, King discussed hanging out with friends who aren't into metal, explaining how he still likes goofing around with guitar. When people come over and want to listen to music most people like, say Michael Jackson or something, I'll go pick up the guitar and learn the one Eddie Van Halen played on. I'll do stupid shit like that, he said. There's this song called, Push It, which got used in commercials and I think it's funny to put that on when friends are over, pick up a guitar and play along. Everyone in the house just dies laughing. For clarity, you can turn that into a metal song. Periphery guitarist Mark Holcomb talked about the essence of heavy music and how being heavy has nothing to do with drop tunings, telling thumb and music. He said, you can sound heavy in any tuning. To me, it's about intent. It's about writing, it's about the attitude of a rift, it's about what it embodies and how it comes across. And even lyrics. The lyrics can make a part seem heavy as balls. There's so many things, a freaking drum beat. A drum beat. If you put a straight four on the floor drum beat over new groove, or the walk off 2010's periphery or something like that, it would be the least heavy thing ever. It's not about the rift, it's about everything coming together. Mark also talked about Periphery's approach to writing music, saying, we like to do our writing together in a room. I'm saying me, and Misha, and Jake, the three guitar players. We'll sit down, and if Jake says, I've got this rift, check it out, or Misha's like, check out this riff, and plays it. It's for Marigold. The first time I've heard that, I was like, oh god, this is going to be a sick song. But none of us said to each other, you know what would sound better? If we played it on the 8th string? None of us ever do that, because you start to lose the spontaneity and original sort of fire of the riff. The reasons that riff was crafted, that it just sort of sparked out of nowhere out of your head, it's an amalgamation of the tuning, the action on your guitar, your headspace, so once you start to swap out one of those variables, you could lose it. I can count on one hand the number of times, because we have done it, it'll either fail horribly, which happens more often than not, or it'll be successful, 